Let us get a Kid Nuts content review for Helen Rezero and Amelia's Future Explained. How much of this gonna, are you going to explain? Last time, you told me you were going to explain a Kid Nuts tears in the trial too. But you lied to me. Here we go. This episode was fire. Things have really started heating up. All the buildup is finally paying off. And the result of that was the best episode of ReZero Season 2. From That's right. Every episode is a new best episode. 10 out of 10. An amazing fight scene to a heartfelt confession. This episode truly encapsulated everything I love about ReZero. Emilia freed the sanctuary. Ran that little... To break the sanctuary is very cute. I said an entire sentence. Elsa was more of a masochist than darkness and horror. Wait, that was... That was else. That was Rem saying it. Prayer should not, should be for seeking forgiveness. Prayer should be seeking. This is Rem saying that to Amelia, as in Amelia does something bad, and you should seek forgiveness through prayer. And your prayer is not doing that. I don't know. Sentence. Elsa was more of a masochist than darkness and Horison combined. <laughs> Subaru burning down the mansion was the perfect way to say fuck you to Roswell, but Rom had something different in mind. I love you. And then Roswell says, I love a kid now. Even without a horn, she's still horny for Roswell. The episode mm -hmm. began with Garfield showing his faith in Subaru. He tells Elsa that no matter how many mobbies show up, Subaru's just gonna laugh. <laughs> yeah, and then he just started, no, this is too much, moody, moody, moody. <laughs> The immediate contradiction with Subaru looking like he just shit himself was a nice dose of humor that was followed by even more humor. Subaru thought that if he filled the room with dust, he could light the dust on fire to make a dust explosion. Cause it is possible, but not with the amount of dust or the material that he used. Using the guilty low to bite the dust. Now, if you guys wouldn't mind a quick science lesson from Bill Nutt the science slut, dust and flour Bill are both combustible while suspended in the air of a confined space. If there's enough tiny particles and enough oxygen, it produces a shock wave when met with a source of ignition. This happens often in flour mills and coal mines, so it's definitely a real thing, but you might have also seen it in anime, especially Spikes Family, episode one. If you have shit taste. In episode eight of Goblin Slayer, they fight this giant testicle that shoots fire lasers. But after Aldebaran throws a bunch of flour <laughs> everywhere, the fire lasers end up causing a dust explosion and the Goblin Slayer is Al confirmed. Testicle is defeated. So does this mean... I guess that means that Al used to be in Goblin Slayer, then he got isekai right? And now he's over in ReZero land. ReZero copied Goblin Slayer? Oh my Subaru god. Subaru tries to do the same thing to the Guilty Low, but miserably fails. Luckily, Otto conveniently brought so much oil that the United States might declare war on him. Imme That's right, baby. Oil, uh, the Guilty Low got assassinated by a child and a being more insignificant than a man. That is sad. Ilya finally tries DMT, and I'm assuming what she saw in her third trial was similar to Subaru's unthinkable presence. Mm. However, there is one very big difference. The second trial is totally fake, and it only shows you unthinkable presence that were never supposed to happen. But the third trial is- It's real. All the shit were imaginary timelines that could have happened if those timelines continued, but this is the actual future. Supposedly the inevitable future, the disaster yet to come. While the previous trials were just fabrications, the third trial is instead a prediction. The trial cal- A prediction, right? Not an absolute timeline, not the absolute thing that we're going to see. A possible timeline of many timelines, and how would you even know that? How could a kid not even show that? Through the Tomb of Wisdom, maybe? ...calculated Amelia's future using her memories combined with Echidna's knowledge of the world. As we know, Echidna's predictions aren't 100% accurate, so the future can still be changed, and probably will. But a lot of theories can be formed based on what we saw, and even Amelia wasn't sure whether each future was a different possibility or a continuation of the previous one. Although, keep in mind that Echidna handpicked every future she wanted Amelia to see, so there's a... She probably picked, like, the worst possible one to see Amelia. ...high chance all the good good happy ones were intentionally left out. Mm -hmm. Now, it makes sense why the visions couldn't be animated because they're literally the future, so anything they showed us would have been a spoiler. However, the dialogue was delivered by the actual voice actors, so I could be wrong about some of these, but here's my interpretation. Okay. <laughs> Subaru tells Reinhardt he's nothing more than a hero, which is oddly the same thing Puck, Puck said. He then sarcastically thanks Reinhardt for the help, implying that Reinhardt wasn't able to prevent something bad. And then there was some extra good content of how, like, this scene was about some child, right? There was some, like, they're on, like, a cliff, like, fucking Sasuke and Naruto. There's a kid who is, like, a threat, and 
somehow like you know even it, right we're gonna be in trouble unless we kill that kid or something <laughs> wilhelm mentions a sword and calls someone a thief the ryuken you cannot even wield a sword without a thief you can without it someone is fraudulently wielding the dragon sword like there's like a fraudulent way to use the power to the dragon sword okay thief this one sounds like an older version of Petra, Petra apologizing to Subaru for getting in his way. That's of course Old Man Rom praising Felt. Otto wishes he died in the cave when he was yep. captured by the witch cult. Al regrets not killing someone. Who is it? Who did Al regret? The only person I know close to Al is Priscilla. Is it directed to Subaru? And then the interesting stuff comes from the web novel cut content, which is how Al, like, Rem senses the miasma from the back of Al's head. Al mentions, is Ram still alive? Al seems to hate both Oni sisters. Al regrets not killing someone. Krush has a curse. Did it happen in the future or does the curse exist currently? Who knows, but she has or is going to have a curse. Krush overcomes a curse. Does she overcome it? I thought that it was like a line to kind of hint that like she will succumb from it and she's coping, but okay, maybe she'll overcome it. And then Priscilla wins again. Priscilla declares victory. I'm assuming she won the royal selection. <laughs> Rom wanted to kill someone who ended up being a good person. It could Don't be know. either Rosball or Super. <laughs> Julius doesn't want to surrender. <laughs> Anastasia, so sad. Anastasia's crying, wishing someone would have asked her for help. It sounds like they died, but I can't say for sure. Yeah, something bad happens. Priscilla's winning. Anastasia's camp is fucked. <laughs> Garfield promises to kill Super. <laughs> Roswell realizes he was never really alone. I th Which means that Super. This is a bad timeline where Subaru kind of does accept Roswell's philosophy, and they're both walking into hell together. Or Roswell has been corrected and realizes that he never was alone all this time. I think he's referring to Hector. <laughs> Hector. Maybe. I have not walked alone all this time. That is all. Maybe. <laughs> Frederica seeks atonement. I have no idea what that's about. That every last drop of blood in her body is to atone. Does it have to do with her being of quarter blood demi-human? Who knows? And then this one's interesting. Felt like saying fuck dragons and magic. <laughs> An older version of Felt threatens to kill anyone who stands in her way. Like, like even the concept of magic? Wait. <laughs> Felix panics after something rejects a soul. Uh oh. And finally, last but not least, I wasn't too sure about this one. I believe praying to ask for a favor is arrogant. I don't know, and Rem is the one saying it. Is she saying it to Amelia? Is someone being admonished because their prayers is not asking... Like, a, fair, a prayer is sh should be asking for forgiveness, not a favor, and she's like calling somebody out. Just kidding. Because Amelia saw Rem in the future, it means Rem's gonna wake up eventually. It probably won't happen this season, but this Maybe means next we season. shouldn't lose hope. In the light novel, Minerva's words to Amelia were described as nostalgic. Why is it nostalgic? Because you heard it a long time ago, when she was your mom? And for some reason, Minerva didn't want Amelia to see her face. Why? Because the subconscious memories would make Amelia realize that this could be her mom. I got a lot of weird vibes from this scene, and really the entire interaction felt like there was more to this relationship than we've been told. Minerva yeah. also claims to have known Amelia's mother, which is the craziest part. And maybe she is the mom, maybe she's speaking in third person. In my opinion. I just don't see how that could be possible, because Minerva died 400 years ago. It's fine. It's fine. Amelia can simply have existed 400 years ago again. You, you just freeze her, or there's... It doesn't have to be frozen, but there's so many mental gymnastics you could do to somehow carry Amelia over from the pre-Calamity until what we see pre-Frozen Bond uh, timeline in Trial 1 memories, as that was not when Amelia was simply born and raised in the forest. No, something must have happened before that forest shit. Oh, and Amelia's only 100 years old. No, 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 don't care. I do not give a fuck about this show and these details like that. Things like this constantly gets thrown out the window. The author intentionally misdirects the audience to make sure that whatever that's been shown is like an absolute fact in this show. But the moment you think like that, you are now tunnel visioning and you cannot theorycraft beyond what you've been uh, misguided to. 
So if Amelia's mother knew Minerva, she would have been at least 300 years old when she gave birth to Amelia. I've thought about it a lot, and I know this is kind of a lazy conclusion, but time travel is the only- Another thing too, right? We know that Satala has like time travel abilities seemingly through turn by deaths and stuff like that. Why isn't it possible that Amelia is a child that got sent to the future? That's also a possibility. The explanation that makes sense at the moment. Every other theory has a few holes in it, but time travel would literally explain everything. I'm Amelia's down for that. family tree is <laughs> What is happening here, bro? Currently the most confusing aspect of re Subaru is actually the father of Amelia, bro. 100% confirmed. Three zero, And it most likely won't be revealed until the final season, but if you want to speculate in the comment section, I'd be happy to read your thoughts and theories. Garfield might actually be the most badass character in ReZero after this episode. I love the way they spun this plot twist. Gar yeah, this shit was hype. Garfield is making me so hopeful for this Marine Forward work. You know, our war arc that's about to happen in season three. Garfield's gonna pop off. Garfield's transformation gave him the advantage over Rock Piggy, and he literally deleted half of Elsa's face. Quarter. That might have been the second most powerful slap of this anime season. This fight scene was everything I've been waiting for. Amazing voiceover, brand new OST, smooth animation, easily the best. What was the strongest slap then? I was like thinking for a second. The one where Fortuna slapped the shit out of Amelia thinking it was Pandora? Best fight scene of the season by far. There was also this implication that Elsa's a vampire. If true, then Garfield might turn into one because Elsa bit him. To be f Oh, I didn't think about that. Vampires. Yo. Could you imagine Garfield that has like a super generation? Yo, I don't know, man. Like Garfield the vampire. I am down. I don't know if that's the way it works, but cool. Fair though, he did bite her first. Either way, I wish that was me. I think it's very misleading to call Elsa a vampire because aside from her quick regeneration ability, she has literally nothing in common with vampires. She isn't pale. She doesn't drink blood. She doesn't take damage. She is pretty pale, don't you think? Damage from the sun and... Yeah, maybe she has, like, she's not a full vampire, but she's, like, got a couple, I don't know, very... Her vampire blood is very, like, thin. Her weakness isn't garlic. It's Garfield. Ladies True. and gentlemen, it's official. Elsa loves Garfield. Although he may be only 14... 14, but in dog years, you know, he's like a quarter beast man. Who knows how that works? 10 years old. You know what? Elsa doesn't discriminate based on age, race, or gender. She True. just wants to kill everyone equally. True. So we should at least... Doesn't matter if you're a man, a woman, a sen senior, child, woman, man, gender, don't care. I just want to see your guts. Respect that. But unfortunately for Elsa, it doesn't look like Garfield celebrated International Women's Day. What makes Elsa such a unique villain is her strong desire to murder. None of the other villains actually enjoy killing. Even the Archbishops Regulus. only do it when they feel it's absolutely necessary. Elsa is the one villain in ReZero who kills people for pleasure for the alone. Sake of kill. And that realization makes Elsa a lot hotter, a lot scarier than before. Yeah, she's just a complete sadist, right? She gets turned on by the killing. It's the peak ecstasy for her. But you know what they say, with great opai comes great responsibility. Elsa was a thief in the past and ended up getting caught. As punishment, the shop owner tried to rape her, so Elsa killed him and fell in love. Ew, was that implied there? I guess it was. In love with the warmth of his guts. She had a very tragic history, but I think we all know what's about to happen after a character suddenly reveals their backstory. Death. Like, you do, you never do that. You, you, during the middle of a fight, like, as soon as she started to talk about her backstory, as there's fire in her eyes, it's like, yup, that's, that's it. It's over. Elsa's death was an amazing scene. Maybe she could have dodged it if she wasn't. Yeah, maybe she could have dodged it, but to me, it felt like, and Ennius also said it, Elsa was, she knew that Garfield could kill her, and she just kind of, like, accepted her death. And her final look after Garfield bit her in the neck and the wound wouldn't heal and she looks over at Garfield in the blood and she realizes like the warmth again reminded of like how she first was uh, she felt the warmth when she killed that shopkeeper guy in the backstory. It's like a book close kind of situation. Elsa has concluded her character arc. She accepts her death. That's how I saw it. Wasn't so infatuated with Garfield, but Rock Piggy's thickness was just too much for her. Not only was Very Rom's thick. confession the highlight of the episode, but it was also the highlight of the season. Is it the highlight of the season? Everyone values different things. Highlight of the season for me may still have to do with Roswell and Subaru's dialogues, especially when the secret was coming off more and more. Satala showing up, or sorry, it should be more Witch of Envy showing up. So that was some crazy shit. There was, there, there was a lot of great moments. Maybe I just don't value sentimental, loving moments like this. 
The insert song and the voice acting were absolutely perfect. Yeah, Ram's voice actor singing the song at the same time. Great scene. Perfect. And I think the visuals and direction were perfect too, but I couldn't tell because my vision was obstructed by tears. Yes, I cried, but I also laughed when Roswell thought Puck entered his Beast of the End form, Me too. but it was just Puck Me too. but larger. The cliffhanger made it look like Roswell won the fight, and if you were paying Yeah, and then Ram flew out into the corner. <laughs> look, she's flying. It wasn't snowing yet at the time, but it was snowing when Amelia left the tomb and Meaning that this scene happens after in the fight we're seeing in the past. We all know what that means. Rabbit. Big Chungus will be arriving shortly, so hopefully Amelia's ready. Rom's confession has so many parallels with Rem's confession in season one, including the insert song. Yes, it did feel like this was basically that moment, but for Ram and I, I have expected Roswell to say, I love Echidna. Both Rom and Rim had their own song playing during their confessions. And I know I say this every week, but this episode was a 10 out of 10. I'm mm -hmm. absolutely stunned, guys. I just want to hurry up and make this video so I can re-watch this episode again. The rolling credits, by the way, only show up in ReZero when White Fox knows they've made a masterpiece. I'll have to wait for the recency bias to wear off, but right now, I really think this was the best episode of the entire season. I don't expect choose. Was it the best episode of the entire season? Maybe it is. It was a very triumphant moment. Everything is getting tied in together. There's a lot of highs right now. Yeah. Me to top this. Maybe. Zero season two has only two episodes remaining. We are almost ready to start the next arc. Of what the hell is this? Y Anastasia, Emilia, Felt, Krush, in some sort of Japanese setting. They're over in Karagi, or maybe a different place where there's Japanese clothing and architecture and clothing. And the Karagi does have a lot of Japanese influences due to Hoshin of the Wild, right? The wilderness, and he was a Japanese dude, so that's cool. Is this like a slice of life episode? Of the story, and similarly, my YouTube channel is also beginning a new arc. For the past two years, my channel has only covered ReZero. If yeah. you haven't noticed, literally all my videos are. That's the thing, right? And just going off a random tangent. This guy's channel, fucking crazy, right? Nearly 300,000, you know, subscribers, only 139 videos. Why? Because he knows that people love ReZero content and he was like the ReZero guy, right? But here's the thing. When growing on YouTube, focusing on one topic is the best thing you can do. But the problem is what happens when you're out of ReZero, right? I'm not going to show you his monthly viewership stuff, but, you know, people just want ReZero content. When you're out of ReZero, you're done, and the viewership just dies off because they were mostly just tourists, right? These are all fucking tourists just checking out ReZero. Some of them, that, that's why it's so important that people watch you for you and not the fucking show or the content that you're covering. But that's, you know, harder said than done. ...about ReZero, and that's because ReZero is my favorite anime. But, this might shock some of you, I do watch other anime. Either way, I wish that- And that's the problem, right? Even if you watch other anime, it's so hard to convince these people, like, to watch these other animes. You start- Maybe there's gonna be some overlap for, like, Mushoku Tensei, right? For other Isekai Tensei content, Overlord, maybe, but... That's the thing, right? Once you cover one specific thing, and your entire audience is based off that, you make a new fucking show, and it's just- The viewer's just not gonna be the same, but... Honestly, Echidna's content... I think that, like, his personality is good enough to the point where people will watch him for him and not just ReZero. So if, if he could just, like, I don't know what his, like, goal is with content creation, right? But he's going to be definitely eaten well as soon as uh, Season 3 comes out. We're talking about other stuff, too. Is Nah, I still watch every video from Echidna. Yeah, but, like, you're a fucking stupid kid that doesn't understand what I'm talking about at a greater scale. Sure, you as an individual might still watch him, but I guarantee you, like, thousands of others that only checked out for ReZero content are not gonna be the same. You are a fucking outlier that doesn't have a fucking understanding of how content creation works. So you're not, like, getting me right now. This isn't a gotcha moment. You're just wanting some dumbass fucking attention. Sure, I'll show you some fucking attention, dark underscore Minecraft underscore 0004. Here's some fucking attention. In Enjoy, I'm gonna make fun of you. Especially now that the devil is a part-timer is coming back. That was one of the anime that really got me into anime, so I can't wait to talk about that. Plus, it'll be nice to finally watch a series where... He has no idea what's about to happen. <laughs> because this is in the past, and Devil's a Part-Timer Season 2 was such a fucking flop, bro. What did they do? Season 1 was so good. Season 2 was absolute doo-doo water. Amelia's best girl. But if you guys have any suggestions for a specific series you'd like to see on this channel... Let 
that's what you got to do, right? While the people, the tourists are around, you ask them, what do you want to see? Then obviously you're not going to have the whole like re zero. Let's see. Let's over here, right? Hold up. I'll show you. Come on. Paint. Fucking move, you piece of shit. Come on. Five, four, three, two. Move. How are you this fucking shitty as a fucking app? Come on. Jesus fucking Christ. If you consider this like the ReZero audience that only wants ReZero content, right? Maybe there's going to be some people that's going to enjoy like, you know, fucking uh, Mushoku Tensei like this, right? Or like some other isekais around. But it's hard to like get the whole piece of the circle because that's all the ReZero and tourists. But that's what you need to do, right? The tourists come in and then of them, you need to, you know, maybe this much will be like the fucking core members and then you move off with like a new smaller chunk and you build them as a core community member. That's how you got to do it. You, it's it's unex it's uh, stupid to assume that when the views are high, it's going to forever continue that way. It's a mix of community members and tourists and you just have to compound off of these different trends and move forward. Let me know in the comments. I want to give an obligatory thank you though. 100k subscribers is a massive milestone. To be honest, I believe if an anime YouTuber does variety content analyzing not just one anime, then people would come for their analysis alone. Nah. You might want to think that. I know how this shit works. Why do you think that in my channel where I do so much fucking analysis content, do you think people care about my Fate Zero analysis content? Remember? Like, the reason why we do so much extra ReZero content is because ReZero just gets way more viewership because more people align with ReZero. People don't give a fuck about Fate, so the moment that I do more Fate analysis, while there are going to be some people watching it, it's not going to be the same, right? It's not about, like, like people... It's, it's that, that's one of the difficult things on YouTube or just content creation alone. You get carried with one series and then it's up to you to try to make those people watch you for you. But just because you do analysis on many things doesn't mean everyone's going to watch everything. Like it, it, it's, it's apparent. It's, it's literally just watch any channel, look at what's popular for them, watch them try to do something different. The views dies off. It's just part of the game. Especially for a channel that only covered one anime. Although not being eligible. A channel that only confirms one anime is literally the smartest thing you can do if you just focused on, you know, short-term growth. ...for the silver play button due to an active copyright strike from Kadokawa was kind of a boner kill. So the satisfaction faded a lot quicker than I thought it would, but anyway, after season two... Nah, a kid that is just goaded, man. I don't know what the fuck you're doing here right now. Do you think I'm calling Echidna a bad content creator? I'm talking about the fucking just brutal reality of content creation and what it means for a channel that's only main one fucking anime and how they're going to expand on. Like, you are a stupid child arguing against someone you don't even fucking know on a topic you have nowhere enough of. Like, what are you doing? I'm not dunking on the guy. I'm literally just fucking talking about fucking analytics. You should get fucking permaban Dark Minecraft 0004. You fucking dumbass. Go play Roblox or Minecraft. Dumb, stupid child, dude. Two finishes. I'm still gonna talk about ReZero, but I'm gonna make other videos too. Don't forget to give this video a like and make. Yes, sir. Please go give Mr. Kidnet a like on the video. Here it is. Check out his channel if you haven't. They make great content, and there's still more ReZero content and beyond just cut content, right? There's like even more just like uh, if routes and all that stuff. Don't worry. We'll be getting them when the time comes. That's it for me. Bye bye.